Hi, long awaited Angular version 9 is finally released. This is the biggest update Angular has made in past 3 years. But don't worry, most of these updates are more about changes to the compiler, not the code that we wrote before. So existing Angular coding experience is still relevant. These updates are under the hood changes and magically change the performance and size of our application. With Angular 9, the community can benefit from smaller, high performance application and a better development experience. So broadly, these are three takeaways of uh, Angular 9, smaller size, high performance and better development experience. We will explore all of these changes practically throughout this course. For now, let's quickly look at the key changes happen in Angular 9. If you are already working on Angular or following it, you are aware of IV, the big buzzword in the Angular world. So what is IV? IV is the main update of Angular 9. It is a new code name of Angular compiler that converts Angular code into browser understandable code. Before that, it was called View Engine. Behind the new code name, there is a huge work from the Angular team. And this is a stepping stone for the future of the framework. It was provided as an optional feature in Angular 8 for preview purpose. And you could have played with it by enabling the same in configuration file. But from Angular 9, it has become the default compiler. If you still want to compile and render your application with the older view engine, you can disable it in tsconfig.json. We will explore it later in this course. For now, you know what IV is. Let's have a look at the important improvement and features provided by IV. Smaller bundle size. It is not that Angular team has focused on helping our app become smaller from Angular 9 only. The last rewrite was done in Angular 4 and maybe you didn't even notice it. But this is by far the deepest rewrite of internals uh, since the initial release of Angular. The IV compiler looks for the parts of Angular that are not being used. It uses tree shaking, a way of detecting unused code also known as a dead code removal. And it generates the less code for each Angular component. Angular team have claimed that for smaller app we can see 30% size reduction. Medium sized apps should see a slightly smaller, only 2% benefit. That is because they don't have enough component to truly leverage uh, smaller factories. Large apps with many components can benefit most from the reduced factory size. Important thing to be noted is that this size reduction is for the compiled application, not the application we developed. Before compilation, you may even see a larger size of default Hello World application, but after build, you will see the decrease in size. To test the same, I created two Hello World app and I can see a 14% size reduction in production build. And also I tried to migrate our property dealing application from 8 to version 9 that we are going to build in this course. And it is little disappointing. I can see only 0.2% decrease in size. It looked like as it comes in the mid size segment is the reason for this smaller decrease. Another improvement is faster testing. Before IV, testbed would recompile all components between the running of each test, regardless of whether there were any changes made to the component or not. In IV, testbed doesn't recompile component between tests unless a component has manually overridden, which allows it to avoid recompilation between the majority of tests, which make tests 40 to 50 percent faster. In IV, you will also see improved build time. If you have worked on previous Angular versions, you would be aware that no error appear on ng serve or build. We are happy that our code is working perfectly. But as soon as we built our application for the production using prod flag, all nightmares started. We ended up with a lot of red text and had to spend sleepless night fixing our application to deliver it to the customer on time. Why did this happen? Because prior to Angular 9, the AOT used to step in only when we executed our build using prod flag. It was because compilation have made the development builds too slow to be a good experience. So the Angular team opted to only put AOT compilation in the production builds. Well, the good news is that Angular 9 brings AOT to the development builds also. The IV compiler makes our builds much faster so fast that it makes it reasonable to pull AOT into the development builds without causing significant delays in the build times. The bottom line is that AOT is now enabled for both development and production and we can find these error in early stage.
and the new IV compiler is not only faster, it also offers stronger type safety and it also makes all of the error messages easier to read. In version 8 or view engine, a typical compiler error would look like this. And in version 9 with IV, the same error look like this. More structured and more information. Another improvement is better debugging. IV now provides us more tools to debug our application. When running an application in development mode, IV runtime exposes a set of functions in the global namespace which are useful for debugging the current state of our application. We will explore these tools in our course. Angular 9 have also improved CSS class and style binding. Another improvement is faster localization. Internationalization has been a core feature of Angular where we can build our application for multiple languages. Angular 9 has made some changes in the build process for internationalization and making it up to the 10 times faster. So these are all the changes related to the new compiler Ivy. There are also another improvements. NG update now does more to tell you that what is going on under the hood. For each migration you will see information about the migration. YouTube player and Google map components are added now in Angular 9. Angular 9 have also improved Angular service extension. We have not yet installed any extension in our VS Code. We will look at these extension in our next video. And now Angular 9 is also updated to work with TypeScript 3.7. So these are all new major changes and improvement in Angular 9. Breaking changes. Very important when we are migrating from previous version. So let's have a look if there are any breaking changes in Angular 9. Here as per the Angular documentation. First one is Angular now compiles with IV by default. So this is under the hood changes and it happens automatically. So no worry. CLI compile in AOT mode by default. That is good thing. And we do not need to make any changes in code. So not a matter of worry. TypeScript 3.4 and 3.5 are no longer supported. Not a big change. Uh, we can easily upgrade it to the new version. TSLib is now listed as a peer dependency. Means we have to install it manually if uh, we are not using CLI to create application. But most of developer use CLI. So not a matter of worry. And there are few deprecation in Angular 9. If I talk about our property dealing application, I have used only render and I simply replaced that to render to get it worked and have not used anything else. So I don't think these are breaking changes and we can easily upgrade our Angular 8 application to the Angular 9. So now we are aware what is new in Angular 9. Next we will understand the structure of default application Angular have created for us. Stay tuned. See you in next video.